Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, the 20 gigabyte 3080 Ti exists. CPU prices are going down. Intel's gaming GPUs compete with what? And AMD will pummel Nvidia with this. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that an RTX 3080 with 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X has been rumored for quite a while now. Unfortunately, it looked to have been canceled. But then there was hope that the 3080 Ti would fill its shoes. Of course, we know the 3080 Ti only comes with 12 gigabytes, so all hope seemed to be lost. Well, in a new video from this Russian YouTuber, a shop in St. Petersburg, Russia has apparently been selling a gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti gaming OC with 20 gigabytes of VRAM. Not only that, but the card was added to Tech Power Up's GPU Z database, overall proving that it is in fact real. Unfortunately, there are a couple issues with this. For one, you can only buy one in Russia. And second, the official game ready drivers don't support it. According to video cards, there's at least three gigabyte models with 20 gigabytes in the wild, but obviously they don't have any real support. Basically, I'd argue that this is likely a model that was canceled, especially given it doesn't include Nvidia's light hash rate, meaning it was probably made before Nvidia implemented it. Still, it's interesting to see that the GPU did in fact exist. Now, while I usually talk hardware on more of a surface level, if you're ready to dive deeper, learn the right way with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the website and app that teaches you math, science, and computer science the way you're supposed to learn, by actually doing it and their courses are made for everyone, from beginners to experts alike. I'm currently learning how computer memory truly works, not just how we all understand it, but how your OS maps it out to an in-depth look at memory caching. And what's even better is that Brilliant has been actively upgrading their courses to make them even more interactive. And they're still working on more. So stop wasting time learning the wrong way. Do it right the first time by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up for today, it looks like AMD is gearing up for Intel's upcoming Alder Lake CPUs. That are their own Ryzen 3D parts. Either way, in a new report from Overclock 3D, retailers have been lowering the prices of Ryzen 5000 CPUs. And yes, that's AMD's newest Ryzen parts. Not long ago, they were selling for some pretty astronomical prices, so it's nice to see those come down. Now, in this story, it's mostly referencing to the UK market, but prices have been falling all over. For example, Newegg is selling Ryzen 5000 parts for a pretty good deal. The 5800X is $50 off right now, plus 10 more when you use the code. And other Ryzen 5000 CPUs are on sale as well. Either way, I'll have affiliate links to them down in the description below if you're interested. It won't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Next up for today, we finally have a story on what Intel's upcoming gaming GPUs actually compete with. For those who don't know, Intel officially confirmed that their upcoming high-performance gaming GPUs are called ARC, with the first-generation parts codenamed Alchemist, and they're set for release early next year. In my last video, I discussed a quote from the CEO that claimed their parts will put pressure on Nvidia, but of course he didn't say what GPUs it would compete against. Intel would still technically put pressure on Nvidia if their cards compete with Nvidia's lower end models. Well, it looks like we finally have an answer. According to a new tweet from known leaker Graymon55, he states the DG2's official competitors are the 6700 XT and 3070. As for where he got that from, video cards actually asked, and Graymon55 replied that it comes from an Intel slide, meaning if this is true, it lends a ton of credence to this claim. Not only that, but he elaborates that the 175 and 225 watt SKUs are the ones prepared to compete. Though, given the wattage of the 3070 and 6700 XT, it's likely the higher SKU. Either way, this really isn't bad. Of course, you may be disappointed that Intel won't be competing on the high end, given this is right, but for their first discrete GPUs, this is actually quite impressive. And competition in the mid-range market is really something I think we need. I mean, remember when the mid-range was under $300? Yeah, those days are clearly gone. Maybe more competition in this space can help. Though, of course, that'll only happen when stock is finally back to normal. Hopefully, that's not too far off. 
And lastly for today, both AMD's upcoming Compute GPUs and gaming cards are rumored to include GPUs based on an MCM design. Of course, I've gone over the benefits of a multi-chip module design over monolithic multiple times, but let me say it really quick. The simple fact is that a processor can only be so large before the yield rates drive up the price to a level that's simply unfeasible. Of course, you can always shrink the transistors, but there's a massive cost in that as well as other issues. In comes MCM, which allows us to combine multiple small, high-yield chips into one part. That's what AMD has done with their Zen architecture, and it looks to be their plans for their next-gen CDNA2 architecture. So far, the MI200 looks to use two GPU modules, though we aren't 100% sure. There does seem to be some debate about a recent leak from GitHub. Either way, according to a new tweet from known leaker Kepler, AMD's follow-up compute card, the MI300, is set to come with a whopping four GCDs, meaning AMD could be planning to combine as many as four GPUs into one, showing us the incredible performance jump that we can expect out of MCM GPUs. And of course, we saw a patent from AMD a little while back that showed us more than two GPU chiplets. If this is true, it would mean some huge performance gains, Though of course, while MCM does mitigate issues with yield rates, pricing would still be pretty high with essentially four MI100s. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's upcoming GPUs or are you more interested in Intel's parts? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.